All right, in this video, our goal is to first find the slope of the tangent line of this graph f of x, um, given that f of x is 2x squared minus 4x plus 13 at a very specific point, at this point, 5 comma 43. So after we do that, we're also going to go ahead and compute the equation of the tangent line in just a minute. First of all, you'll notice that I have the limit definition of derivative over on the right-hand side. So f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now in our case, because we're given this very specific value for h or for x, we care about the point five comma 43. That's a value of x, it's gonna be five. So in our general form, what we can do is simply plug in five from the beginning. The other option would have been write it all out um, in terms of x's and at the very end, after you've computed the, um, the derivative, what we could do is plug in a five at that point. So what we wanna do is figure out what's f prime of five, um, because the derivative is going to be the, the slope of the tangent line. So in this case, we have the limit as h approaches zero. And as we plug in, it's going to be five plus h gets plugged in for each of our x's initially. So five plus h quantity squared minus four times five plus h plus 13. And that completes the f of five plus h part. From there, we need to subtract off the original function as we plug in five for each of the x's. So two times five squared minus four times five plus 13. And this is all over h. Now at this point, eventually we wanna plug in zero for our h as we take this limit, but we can't from the beginning because we have h in the denominator. Our goal as we go through is eventually we wanna get rid of that h from the denominator. So continuing on here, here is going to be a bunch of algebra for simplifying down that entire numerator. So if, to do so, I'm gonna think of this as two times the quantity, five plus h times another copy of five plus h, minus, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this negative four to each one of these terms. So with that, we get minus 20 plus, minus four h, bring the plus 13 along, minus, now all of this inside is gonna simplify down to, I guess we have um, two times 25, minus 20 plus 13 on the inside here. I guess that makes 50, this will be 50 minus 20 plus 13, which will make a minus 43 overall. All right, next up a little multiplying out here. We'll bring the limit as h approaches zero along. This will be two times as we go first out or inner last, 25 plus 5h plus 5h plus h squared minus 20 minus 4h plus 13 minus 43. Now we can go ahead and combine all of those constants together. They're like terms at this point if we wanted to. But I'm gonna go ahead and distribute my two in the numerator. So we have 50 plus these terms will create a 10h times the two from out in front, we'll make 20h plus 2h squared, as we distribute that to the h squared, um, minus 50 minus 4h all over h. Um, to get the minus 50, I had our like terms here, we have the 20 plus negative 20 plus 13 minus 43 gives me this negative 50. All right. From here, we have positive 50 minus 50. We'll get to cancel each other out. And then we still have the limit as h approaches zero. Um, 20 h's minus four h's makes 16 h's plus two h squared, just combining like terms from our numerator. At this point, all of our terms in the numerator have h's in common, so we can factor out a common factor. And I realize they have two and h, but we really just care about the h because our goal, remember, is cancel out the h from the denominator. So that'll leave us with 16 plus 2h up in our numerator. Um, the h's get to cancel each other out because the, there are common factors between numerator and denominator. They create a one. 
That leaves us with 16 plus 2h to take the limit. And now it's okay to take that limit and plug in a zero by substitution here because h is no longer in the denominator. We would have had a problem over here where putting zero in the denominator is not, not okay because we're not allowed to divide by zero, but plugging in zero for this h is gonna be okay because it's no longer in the denominator. So that's 16 plus two times zero, which works out to be 16. What that tells us is f prime of five equals 16, but the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So at this point, we've gone ahead and we found the slope of the tangent line. We're gonna use that slope of the tangent line being 16 in conjunction with the ordered pair 5, 43. And we're gonna use these two pieces of information back to algebra to find the equation of the line that contains the point 5, 43 and has a slope of 16. So you have a few different options for this. Um, we could simply go straight to the y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form, or we could use the point slope form of a line, which a reminder is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, in which case m16, x1 is gonna be five, y1 is gonna be 43. So we can say y minus 43 equals 16 times x minus five. Um, but in this case, we are asked to get this into the form y equals mx plus b, which basically means y has to be on one side all by itself. So from here, a little bit of distributing. So 16x and then distribute it to the five also is gonna be minus 80. To get y on one side all by itself, we'll add 43 to both sides. So we get y equals 16x minus 37, uh, in which case we can see our slope is gonna be 16 and the y-intercept is gonna be negative 37. All right, hope this video helps. Uh, if you're struggling with any of these limit definitions for finding the slope of the tangent line and also putting that together with finding the equation of the line itself. All right, till next time, we'll see you.